Got it. Well, and I imagine it's a lot less prone to kind of like you just said, kind of to breaking or if, uh, you know, something gets it like, say, the spawning pool dies early or something. Some bots mm -hmm. will just shut down after that. They just can't do anything. <laughs> Yeah, and and um, the thing when you when you have a predefined build order, the the risk there is that it goes back to the beginning. So um, you know, you just you kill the spawning pool, it goes up back to building a spawning pool, and then it waits for that to be finished, and then it continues to make more decisions from there. It, it doesn't go. Oh, I've also got these other, and you know, I can still pump out other things. Or I can still do other things. It kind of gets stuck at those early game decision making. Gotcha. Well, I'm glad it took me seven weeks to finally understand how this thing works. Uh, <laughs> definitely, I'm not as smart as you get, you guys, and all these bot makers. So, so one of the one of the things about about training your bot and having a decisions at, at certain steps is making decisions uh, too frequently can actually make it more difficult for your for your bot to learn. It's because things haven't quite changed enough, so it's getting too much information. But making decisions too infrequently means that a lot might have changed and, uh, you know, it can't react quickly enough to uh, things that are happening in the game. So choosing that exact sweet spot, um, it's kind of a bit of an art form, I guess, and uh, one of the yeah. tricks for people building a bot. Yeah, all I know is my bot is in Python. That's uh, You could probably answer Yamabusi's question. SC2, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, the Sharpie framework, which... Um, uh, which what is it the harvester i think uses um the the sharpie framework is uh built on top of python sc2 so it's kind of like a an, an add-on i guess uh you know a tech lab or something on top of, of python sc2 uh, that mm -hmm. makes a, a few of the <laughs> game mechanics a little bit more easier to to control just really favoring the the swarm host right now so this is where it's maybe not responding hydras, to yeah. Yeah, it's not responding to what the enemy has or maybe it didn't predict. So this is one of the things about you build a bot that maybe changes its decision based on what it sees, but it's not really making an intuitive prediction about what it might see, if that makes any sense. So, you know, good good human players will say, oh, I think that they're going, um, you know, muters or whatever it happens to be. I'm going to go heavy on the hydras or, or you know, anti-air, something like that. Um, whereas... If you wait until you see muters, then you've got to respond. Then you're, you know, you can be too late and you've already lost too many things. I was gonna, I was gonna say this is probably a case where a, a human might do better because they might go, well, I'm getting attacked on a bunch of bases, but I'm just going to deal with them one by one. And, mm -hmm. you know, not having the ability to multitask means that you can, they might be able to deal with it better. You just a more focused defense, I guess. Yeah, you can keep your hydras grouped up or run them away until it's time to fight or something. Mm. But uh, unfortunately, Harvester's hopes and dreams will be shattered by the Mutalisks here. Uh, Harvester did have to win this to uh, move on into the top four here. So I believe after this, we've pretty much got our top four uh, guaranteed. 